Hi friends, welcome back to Raising Wanderers. My name is Lauren and today I am going to be chatting with you guys about all of the curriculum that we're using in addition to the good and the beautiful. So if you're new here, um, I just want to invite you to subscribe and like this video. Um, on this channel, I talk about all things homeschool related. And um, today, like I said, we're just going to be chatting about um, some things we're using in addition to our Good and the Beautiful curriculum. Um, if you've seen any of my past videos and like curriculum hauls, you know that for the most part, everything we use is the good and the beautiful. I really fell in love with it last year and decided to um, pretty much make it like our core curriculum. Um, but we're also going to, um, we do a different history. Um, we've kind of bounced around through different um, history programs. We've tried master books, social studies. We tried um, the Peaceful Press Playful Pioneers last year. We really liked the Peaceful Press Playful Pioneers. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, we liked that last year, um, but just kind of wanted to try something different. Um, so this year we're doing um, the story of the world um, by the well-trained mind and I'm really excited about this one. Um, this one's pretty close to kind of what I did as a child. Um, I know I, my mom, I was homeschooled as well and my mom did a lot of things from the well-trained mind. Um, but back then I think it was like a child's history of the world or something like that. Um, I think that's still a book. <laughs> Oh, but we're doing this one. We're doing story of the world. Um, so I just got this in and I thought I would just do a quick little look through. Um, since I, you know, I showed you all my other stuff. <laughs> I also always, I've been like watching so many videos of story of the world, trying to get information on how to use it and what works best for people. So I'm going to be using this for my second and third grader. And um, this is volume one, which is going through the ancient times from the earliest nomads to the last Roman emperor. So this is like one of my favorite times in history to study about. I love ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, ancient Rome. I love learning about that stuff. It's just, I don't know, it's so much fun. Um, so this is really just like a book, okay? So I have the book, but the kit that I got did not come with the audiobook, um, and I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting that. Um, but then again, I like literally don't own a CD player, um, which is sad. I think we have a karaoke machine downstairs that might have a CD player in it. Um, but all the kids had a CD, and I don't, I like, I don't, like I said, I don't have a CD player, but they do offer just the audio um, file on their website. So I'm going to be buying that, okay? So I have the book, which I will definitely read to my kids. I love that it's just in a story format. I think that's really fun. There's maps, there's pictures. Um, so we're definitely going to be reading this, but then I think it's a great idea to have that audio version, whoa, -oh, that audio version um, for, you know, trips in the car, uh, we do field trips every Friday, so having that day being gone on Fridays, it would be great to be able to at least listen to history while we are in the car. So I plan on reading and listening, um, but not getting the CD, getting the audio file. Then it also comes with a test, which I really liked that it came with test. Um, there's a test for every single chapter and the chapters are not long. Like some chapters are like four pages. And I feel like this is not really test as it, much as it is just comprehension questions. And I really like that it has comprehension questions because um, with the Playful Pioneers that we did last year, um, it was, a you know, it wasn't, it was just a lot of reading and activities. And I don't know so much um, how much information <laughs> they may have retained. So... Um, they do like a yearly assessment. They like send out a yearly assessment for you to give to your students. But I kind of like, like, okay, were you guys actually listening to the things that we just read? Or, you know, like, I kind of like that it already has those questions laid out for me. Um, 
and it's just, it comes in you know different formats so there's like fill in the blanks multiple choice and there's also some true and false questions so I really like that um, more than likely what I'll do with this is I will uh, probably keep it in this book and just read my kids the questions and then um, have them fill it out in their notebooks is probably more than likely what I will do. Um, so, you know, I'll read them the fill in the blank question, have them write down the blank um, and read the multiple choice question, have them write A, B or C and then write true or false for the true and false questions. Um, maybe that's what I'll do. Um, but then also I'm kind of thinking like, oh, it might be good for them to reread the information. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so I'll either make a copy of this because I have two students and only one of these. Either make a copy of the test or just read it. The reading sounds easier than making copies. Um, so the test answer key. And then it also comes with this like gigantic activity book. And like the first half of the activity book is like your teacher's manual. All of this is teacher's manual stuff. Um, so going over your projects, your basically your schedule for every single chapter, um, your encyclopedia cross-references, there's more review questions on here. So you could even just do this. You, would, you really honestly don't even need that test thing. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> you might find that you don't even need to buy that if you are looking into Story of the World. Um, but I think it's just a good thing to have. And it wasn't expensive. It was like 10 bucks for tests. So it already has like a lot of the review questions and it has narration exercises, additional history reading, corresponding literature suggestions. So if you wanted to give your kid an extra book to read, um, some audiobook suggestions, map work, coloring pages. Um, so for the coloring pages, then you turn to the student section and you just go to the corresponding page. So here's some maps that you would color. And um, it has like games in there. So here's like a maze. And it has lots of coloring pages. This one's kind of fun where you um, write your name in Greek using the Greek alphabet. So it just has, some, I think, a lot of really fun activities. Um, you can make stickers, you can make paper dowels, you're gonna make a little stick horse. It has just lots of cute things and um, it looks really, really fun. I like all the map work. So that's Story of the World. We are, like I said, doing Story of the World for our history, but it also has, I think, a little bit of geography in there as well. Um, so that is for my second and my third grader. Then we are also doing um, our own separate literature. We um, are doing the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts, which does have literature, and we plan on doing that literature um, that's in the curriculum. But I really wanted to read my kids some like classic children's books, so we are going to do our own literature. Um, curriculum just kind of that I'm just putting together. So I just came up with four books that I really liked um, that I thought were classics and um, wanted to read to my kids. Um, and then I also found some comprehension guides just like on Amazon and online. There's some from like teachers, paid teachers. Um, I got a few off of Amazon and um, than some I just found for free. So this year we're gonna be reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And for this one, I found a really great resource that was free on Roald Dahl's website, um, which just has some like really fun writing activities. And I just printed this whole thing out. Um, so it has like, you know, coming up with your own chocolate bar. And then you like draw the picture of the chocolate bar. It has like making up a name. Um, you know, you think of like, Augustic's Gloop, or you think of um, Willy Wonka, you know, like the Wonky, you know, like there's different, uh, like making the name mean something, you know, just like stuff like that. So it has really fun writing activities. This doesn't have any um, comprehension questions or vocabulary. Um, so I will have to find those extra. 
So I have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Stuart Little. I um, bought a comprehension guide that goes with that. I know, so what I'm looking for in my um, like lit guides is comprehension questions, vocabulary, um, some kind of writing activity and some kind of like extra activity, a craft or something like that. That's what I'm looking for in my literature guides. Um, so like I said, I found the writing and extra activities for um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I just need to find comprehension questions and vocabulary, which I did. I just saved them on my phone. Um, Stuart Little and Peter Pan. I found nothing for Peter Pan yet. I need to look this one up. And I just bought Charlotte Webb, uh, Charlotte's Webb's um, literature guide today. And these literature guides are like $6. Like they are not expensive. And they're just from, I just get the ones that are on Amazon. Um, so that's what we're doing for literature. Um, and I plan on just reading a chapter a day and just kind of, you know, doing maybe one book a month, like nothing too intense. Um, I'm going to be reading it. Uh, we might do it in the morning. We might do it at nighttime, at bedtime. Like I'm not sure yet, um, but nothing too intense. Like I said, we already are technically doing literature through the good and the beautiful. This was just like in addition to, um, so we can get those uh, really good books in. Then my last thing, this is something that my preschooler will be doing. She's doing um, preschool through the good and the beautiful. I showed that in an unboxing as well. And I showed how I organized her preschool stuff in um, a past video as well. Um, but this I got off of Amazon and it's my preschool busy book. And this is something that she used last year, sort of. She really just like stuck the little Velcro pieces onto the book um, and didn't really understand what she was doing. So this year, hopefully now that she's learning numbers and letters and colors and shapes and all that stuff, she'll be able to really do this like by herself correctly. <laughs> Uh, so this is just a little book. It's really cute, actually. A little preschool book that um, is Velcro and dry erase. And it has these little Velcro pieces. And then I went through and I just bagged all of the activities for that page. And so for this, like she's just going to go through and match all the crayons to her you know, correct colors. And I think this is just something great to give her when I'm working with the older kids. It has letters. I went through and like I said, just some of these need to be reorganized. Letters, now hopefully she'll actually, you know, understand which letter is which. Numbers, we don't really focus on the bottom. You know, math symbols, more than just the top. Oh, this one's kind of halfway done. Uh, this little puzzle that makes a rainbow, but also matching the numbers. Her shapes. Big and small. Uh, weather and seasons. Um, and so for this one, I thought when we get to this page, because she doesn't quite like understand seasons yet, um, but this would be something good that I would do with her. So we are, we can pick out, you know, what's the season and what is it doing outside today? Is it raining? Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? That's something I was going to do just with her. Um, and then there's more, um, this one has like for, you know, snow, like there's like a sweater and like, what should we wear when it's cold out? And, oh, if this is, you know, if you have a windmill, it's windy, you know, what is it doing? Or an umbrella for the rain. So you just kind of like match the little pictures with what the weather is like. Parts of your face. This one's just kind of funny. Like it's just like her, you know, little puzzles. That's really all. Vegetables and fruit. Again, just little puzzles. And more puzzles, just matching. An animal puzzle matching. Um, and then it has the days of the week, which again, I'm going to go through with her. And this, I don't really know 
why they added this stuff on here. <laughs> like a fake little schedule, but the days of the week I will go with her, over with her. And also the months of the year is something good that we can go over. Um, and then it has like little holidays that happen during those months. Um, there's just like a little planet matching game. We're not really learning about planets yet, but I thought it was just fun. It's something simple for her to do. Like I said, a lot of it is just matching. Some of it I'll go over with her. Um, but this was um, just a fun little thing that she asked to do all the time last year. She just didn't really quite understand how to do it. She just matched everything. Um, and that was just an Amazon purchase. So um, those are the three things that we're just going to be adding to our Good and the Beautiful this year. Um, guys, that is all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like videos like this, again, I just want to invite you to subscribe and give this video a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.